Hello, welcome and good evening to another little electronics and soldering thing. Well, we don't have to solder anything because we already did the header for the Raspberry Pi. And these are also actually with soldered headers that I did a year back or so. So it's all set up, but it's also easy enough because it's all only headers. What are we building? We are building a Raspberry Pi based FM radio. What do we need? Um, for prototyping we need a breadboard like this. You already know this from my very early videos. Uh, it lets you basically use jumper wires and standard um, 2.5 mm space components and just plug them in and connect them. The power rails are connected vertically and the other um, rows are basically connected horizontally. There's a divider here in the middle. Okay, what's the setup going to be? We will use the I2C bus of the Raspberry Pi to drive one of these little things. So this is basically a, an a FM, stereo FM radio on a chip. So this tiny little thing here, let's turn it around. This tiny little I see here, this is called an a SI470X and it's basically a full FM receiver, stereo receiver. Very tiny, it just needs a little uh, quartz here oscillator. There's also a teeny tiny head um, phone power amp to drive this output here. And if we turn it around we can see the interface. Basically um, this thing needs 3.3 volts and has I2C input. I2C is a ubiquitous bus for embedded devices, just needs two lines, data and clock. And there's also a reset pin here and some general purpose I/O pins, which we don't need. And also this, I don't know, sensing pin maybe? I don't need it either. So reset, I2C and the power supply is all we need. These things are dirt cheap. You can get them for like a euro, maybe two for each of those. Um, if you buy them in quantities, they're probably even cheaper. And uh, they are only doing FM radio, but this is still very nice because that's still a thing here. And uh, the digital audio broadcast system DAB is not that popular yet. Plus, um, ICs for those are much more expensive. And what we actually also need is, since this is a 3 volt device and the Raspberry Pi is a 5 volt device, we need one of these here. I think I've used them before. Um, it's a level shifter. It has uh, two power supply pins, 5 volts and 3 volts, plus a ground connection, and uh, four pins for bidirectional bus. And what you can actually do with these is just put them here in the middle so they bridge the gap, and then this side here is 5 volts. And this is 3 volts, and you can basically translate the I2C signals from 5 volt to 3 volts, which is very nice. And the good thing about these headers here, and especially if you mount them this way, is you can actually plug them in just like this. Take care on the other side, there's the oscillator that it doesn't get crushed, and then it really nicely matches up. The 3 volts here line up, the ground lines up, and then the to see and the reset pins get passed through from the 5 volt to the 3 volt side. Very nice indeed. Other than that you basically just need to plug in the cable here and connect everything up. I'm gonna show you the results of this wiring up after we have a try on the software side and um, you can take a still picture of this and wire it up yourself. It is not that hard to do. You just have to look up where these pins are basically on the GPIO header of our nice little Raspberry Pi. We will use a, some open source Python software that someone wrote a while back, which um, basically initializes this device via the I2C bus, sets some register values, and then you basically already have a FM radio going. And that's what we're gonna look at right now. Okay, so we clone the GitHub repository. I will post the link in the video description. 
there's not much to it. Um, just copy and paste the link and it only takes maybe a couple of seconds because it's very small. Then you can change to that directory si470x rds logger and there is a readme file here which explains the idea of this project and of notice here that there's one original piece of code that stems from a forum post which is basically what we will run because it lets you just simply scan for radio channels. Okay, so we need to install a little bit of software. You need the Python smbus package, otherwise this thing will not work because you can't use the I2C devices. I already installed it, obviously, because I tested it beforehand. The other thing that you need to do is run Raspberry config, go to the interfacing options and make sure that you have the I2C bus enabled. If you don't do that, again, you will not be able to connect to this thing. Okay, so let's take a look at the source code. We are looking at the original Python script and as you can see here, it imports the GPIO package, which is logical since we drive this thing via the GPIO and also the SM bus for the I2C devices. And it sets up the GPIO pins here. This is pretty boilerplate code and you can look it up on quite a number of tutorials. Then it defines some I2C registers. The details here are probably not that interesting, but every I2C device has a bunch of registers that you can read and write. So like changing the channel or the volume or whatever. For example, this uh, is the channel register and there's an oscillator and also RDS information registers. Yeah, and then probably the next interesting thing is um, the init function, which initializes the chip and it basically does a um, reset by pulling the reset pin to low and then high and also setting the um, I think the I2C thing to zero. Yeah well and after that uh, oscillator has to be turned on so that you can actually tune into some radio station and here we see it also sets some of the volume registers sets the volume to the lowest and the extended volume range. But since I'm recording here via line and I'm gonna comment this out because otherwise it's very, very silent. If you're listening with headphones, I think that's fine um, to have this in and not to blast your headphones, but this um, is for me for the line input too low. So let's listen to this thing. Now tune in to a station near my place here for the time being, and I'll skip around to avoid the YouTube copyright protection. There are some Dutch stuff coming in here. Anna van der Breggen is the best wielrenster van 2018. Since I'm living near the border, I'll pick up a lot of Dutch stations. And I'll say this is a success. It works. So you can basically take this Python code and build your own radio, um, yeah, strip it out and use it, like you can build a web front end of something. And there's something else here. Um, so a lot of stations are not picked up very well because I'm indoors and the antenna is basically just a 3.5 millimeter lead, which is not very much. Yeah, but it proves that it works. You can scan, you can show the RDS information if available, but within the reception years simply too bad. So this is what the final setup looks like. I haven't attached the HDMI and the power USB lead so far but you can do that. Um, so what you see here is the breadboard, the level shifter which shifts from the 5 volts of the Raspberry Pi GPO opens to the 3.3 or 3 volts demanded by the SI470X chip so that we don't destroy this thing. And also here's the antenna lead, which is basically the line out or the headphone jack. And this uh, little lead is actually also doubling as the antenna. So reception is, will not be great, but it will work. And um, yeah, depending on if you're inside or outside, outdoors, um, reception will vary greatly. So what did we do here? Um, this part 
here is the three volt rail so there's ground I made a common ground from the ground pin on the Raspberry Pi Zero and connected it also to the ground on the 5 volt rail the 5 volts goes to um, let us pick it up the 5 volts goes to the very first pin here on the corner uh, you can look it up this is the 5 volt DCC the third pin here is ground the white cable here on the corner is the 3 volts goes over to the plus 3 volts here and right next to it are um, I2C clock and data which are just routed over here to the level shift and on the other side it will go into the SDIO and SCLK so IO and data IO and clock pins of the radio chip. The ground and 3 volt will go on this side. Um, it's clearly labeled on the bus and it's also very clearly labeled on the SI PCB basically. One more thing that needs to be connected is the reset pin here. Hope you can see that. This is the last one on the level shifter. It goes here to this purple wire right on the corner. And this will go to pin 8 of the um, topmost row of the GPIO. Um, this is GPIO pin 23 and it's used for resetting the whole thing and to, um, switching it to I2C to wire mode basically. Um, yeah, so that's that's it. Yeah, there's not much to it. This is the setup. Um, I'll leave it here so you can pause the video and check the connections. Try to uh, make it a bit more clearer by maybe tweaking the cables a little bit here. Um, let's zoom in a little bit as well. So this should be hopefully pretty visible. Maybe turning the lamp over here. So this is the setup. Make sure that you double check, especially the VCC and ground connections, that you don't have any shorted pins and especially don't uh, mess up the 3 and 5 volts. Otherwise you can destroy these mm, tiny little PCBs very easily. Yeah, that's about it. So have fun replicating this thing. Please share, like and subscribe as usual. And, well, have a nice evening.